Hello everyone, this is our science teacher Tim Martin, and in this video we want to talk about the different types and the formation of precipitation. Let's start out by talking about precipitation on the ground. What happens if the dew point is above the freezing point of water? Well, it should come as no surprise that dew will occur. Dew forms through condensation when water vapor condenses on the surface of things like plants and grasses. On the other hand, if the dew point is below the freezing point of water, condensation does not happen. Rather, deposition will occur and frost or small ice crystals will appear on leaves or on the side of my fur hat as happened in Siberia. I'd like to point out that frost is not the same thing as frozen dew. Frost occurs through deposition. In this case, dew formed on this grass the temperature continued to drop below the freezing point and the dew indeed froze. The process of freezing going from liquid to solid is different than that of deposition where we go from water vapor directly to solid. But what about precipitation in the air? Certainly snow is one of the most common forms of solid precipitation and certainly very beautiful. I mentioned with the picture of the fur hat when I was in Siberia, this picture was taken at Lake El Gigitkin when I was on an international science research expedition. Working in the high Arctic, I became very familiar with many different types of snow. Not only working in snow, it's fun to play in snow. There was a deep powdered dump here in the mountains of Utah where I skied and boarded with my son and daughter. Of course, snow can also be interesting for transportation. These pictures were taken at the finish line of the Yukon Quest, the world's longest sled dog race. These dogs just got done running 1,400 miles. So snow is the most common form of precipitation in many parts of the world, and it's formed through the process of deposition. The size of the snowflake depends on the temperature with larger snowflakes occurring at warmer temperatures and smaller snowflakes at colder temperatures. We'll see snowflakes range in size from as small as a millimeter to up to about two centimeters. I was very interested in looking at different snowflakes and tried to take a few pictures. Finally, a few years ago, I decided to up my game. I 3D printed a bracket to hold my phone to take pictures through the microscope. And with everything sitting outside in the cold, I began to photograph snowflakes. I learned that there's many different kinds of snowflakes, whether they're splinters or columns, hexagonal plates, some with branches, others with plates on the end of branches, and then the dendritic snowflakes. There's a host of different snowflakes, and this is just a selection, my snowflake image collection. Snow is an important water source in many parts of the world, and we know that average snow has about a 10 to 1 snow to water ratio. This particular snowstorm was a quite a dry snow at a 14 or 15 to 1 ratio. If you want to make a good snowball or a snowman, hope for a snowstorm that is 5 or 8 to 1. That's a better packing snow. So what about rain? Rain seems to be a common form of precipitation around the world. Well, how does it form? Let's go back to snow. This is actually a rather complex process much of the time. Cloud droplets rise above the freezing level because the higher up in the atmosphere, the colder it gets. When they rise above the freezing level, many times supercooled water forms. This is water that is below zero degrees Celsius but still remains liquid. Since ice crystals form more easily than water droplets, the supercooled water will evaporate, then deposit and form snow. But what about rain, you say? Well, when the snow falls through warmer air, it melts and falls as rain. Coalescence is a process for rain formation in warm locations. I can easily demonstrate that with this plexiglass and a spray bottle. Watch what happens when I begin to spray little tiny droplets of water on this plexiglass. 
the small droplets collect or coalesce together. They gradually build in size until they get big enough that gravity makes them slide down the glass. A very similar thing happens in the atmosphere. Tiny drops gather in size until they're big enough that they actually fall. So back a little bit more to the formation of rain. Condensation that occurs in clouds will form cloud droplets. Cloud droplets specifically are around two hundredths of a millimeter or smaller in size. That's less than one fiftieth of a millimeter. They stay suspended in the air due to the lift process that is instrumental in forming the cloud. But how do they fall? Well, to have them fall, they need to get a little bit bigger through the process of coalescence. If the droplet is quite small, less than half a millimeter, we'll refer to that as drizzle. Drops between half a millimeter and up to five millimeters are the ones we refer to commonly as rain. Do they get bigger? Not very often. Larger raindrops will frequently break apart as they fall and then become smaller once again. There's other less frequent types of precipitation, like the precipitation that happened around this tree on a cold winter morning. This is what's known as rime or rime ice. I'll never forget camping this night at Mount Mitchell, high in the mountains of North Carolina. There were heavy clouds and a strong wind. Throughout the night, the wind blew and the ice built up on all the trees. The question is, from which way was the wind blowing? You may or may not guess this correctly. The wind was actually coming from left to right. The supercooled water in the cloud was waiting to freeze on any object it could, so rime builds up into the wind. We can see here rime ice formed on a delicate spider web. Rime is also quite common associated with snow. Here we see a number of snowflakes that we say are rimed crystals. They have little tiny droplets of water that froze on the surface of the snowflake. Another type of precipitation is virga, or rain that evaporates before it hits the ground. This picture was taken as I was driving down a highway in a convertible with the top down. I decided not to put the top up. And when I got to the top of this hill where it appeared to be raining, there was no rain hitting the ground. The rain evaporated before it hit the ground. This can be a particular problem out west where there are dry thunderstorms. Lightning strikes, and if no water hits the ground, it can increase the likelihood of fire. Another type of frozen precipitation is sleet. When rain falls through cold air, and freezes before it reaches the ground, the little droplets may actually freeze into spheres of ice. This was my backyard during a sleet storm one recent winter's day. Looking closer, you can see the little pellets of ice. Under a microscope, you can see more of the details on the surface of these small pellets of ice. Another form of frozen precipitation is the one that we hate here in the Piedmont of North Carolina, freezing rain. These are the common ice storms, sometimes referred to as glaze ice. These occur after several days of cold weather when rain hits a freezing surface. Many people will not forget the severe ice storm in February of 2003. Ice built up on all the trees and the utility lines Power lines became encrusted with ice, became so heavy that they broke, or sometimes trees became so heavy that they fell down on the power transmission lines. Many people were without power for over a week. So this diagram summarizes many of our common forms of winter precipitation. You'll see that they all start out as snow. If it falls through cold air, as is on the right, it will end up as snow. If it falls through some warm air, but then a significant amount of cold air, it may turn to sleet. On the other hand, if the cold air is just right at the surface, it may be freezing rain. 
If it falls through warm air the whole way down to the surface of the earth, we'll see rain. There's one other form of frozen precipitation that frequently occurs in the summer, and that's hail. These are some hailstones that fell in my yard. As a trained weather spotter for the National Weather Service, I called in a report, and the report that I gave was used in a severe weather forecast that was shared with other people throughout our state. Hail is ice formed in the convection currents in large cumulonimbus clouds. As raindrops fall, they may get caught into the updraft and blown near the top of the cumulonimbus cloud, which may be near the tropopause. With temperatures at 60 or 70 degrees below zero, that water will freeze. A new layer of ice will be added in each cycle through the cloud. If you're interested in the different types of precipitation, I'd encourage you to investigate a citizen science project known as COCORAS, or the Community Collaborative Rain, Hail, and Snow Network. You can find this online, and you can contribute measurements to a national and even international network of others who are interested in weather and tracking precipitation. In the next video, we'll take a look at air masses in the Earth's atmosphere. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.